Welcome to a new season of the Sim Gear GT3 Premier League brought to you by Bullers, the Bulgarian Electronic Racing Series organization. As you can see, we're making liberal use of a new feature in iRacing, that being the rain. Our drivers taking to the Autodromo Internacional do Algarve, based in southern Portugal, of course. And, uh, well, often you go there for sunshine, even in the winter months, to do some testing to get your eye in in uh, the world of reality. But in iRacing, the heavens have opened, which means we're going to have a very tricky weekend, potentially here, a very tricky pair of races. We are three minutes into a 20-minute qualifying session at the moment. As you can see, we're using GT3 machinery, uh, the IMSA GT3 pack on the iRacing platform which means we've got six manufacturers on the circuit. We have numerous nationalities, plenty of top-line teams as well on the grid for this one. We have our defending champions out there. We have some of last year's front runners joining us for another crack at the championship. Lots of drivers as well with experience beyond iRacing, on other sim platforms, on... Uh, the real world motor racing stages as well. This is a very, very strong grid. Two classes as well, divided into pro and am categorizations. Two races of differing lengths as well. So we're going to have two sprint races, but the first race, Heat 1, will be more of a sprint than the second. The first race of the day will be a 20-minute uh, race. There will be a warm-up of 10 minutes between the two, and then a reverse top 10 40-minute encounter will close out our broadcast today. So two very exciting races in prospect here. Cars just now rolling on flying laps in qualifying. The first lap, the marker, if you will, is set by Daniel Markov in the vertical grip Porsche. There is Markov in the number five. Viktor Varbanov, who we saw crossing the line just behind him, in one of the uh, Yekov Rally School Lamborghinis. Has set uh, a faster time than him, though. We'll see how the times evolve across this session. The fastest uh, lap of the session so far, 153.303, and that has just come in from Chris Vrzhilov. But that will go down substantially over the course of this session in the practice session that immediately preceded this broadcast it was uh, georgi rachev that was fastest for vertical grip in one of the lamborghinis so we expect him to be fast not just because of that but because of course he was one of the main protagonists in the previous season in season seven uh, third in the standings within the pro class ultimately there is the number three facing the wrong way that is certainly suboptimal and that is Georgi Rachev so just as I was hyping up he, he has gone into a spin in the Lamborghini Huracan GT3 car so uh, commentators curse biting bright and early on this broadcast let's try not to do that too often to too many of them well, they won't have me back uh, we have them just going through turns 10 and 11 at the moment one of the trickier corners to get right double apex of course then downhill sweeping through turn 12 while the turn 12 is fairly simple in dry conditions in the wet i think we might see the cars dancing underneath our drivers a bit more than they were expecting see there two of the porsches there's the number 42 machine that is uh, very well turned out car i must say i do love some of these liveries this is the current fastest driver out here that is Vrasiliov in the negative delta srt car as you can see a lot of effort put into making these cars look their finest and that is uh, adding to the professionalism of the series for sure of course this broadcast brought to you by pit lane tv as you can see you are joining us on the Pit Lane TV YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday evening. A little bit of a down weekend for uh, for motorsport in general. Formula E got their racing out of the way early. British GT are on tomorrow. Uh, can't race on Sunday at Alton Park. So if you are starved of GT racing today, 
this is the place to be with our two classes, with our entry exceeding 40 cars. It's a very exciting grid of machinery. As you can see, the Porsches, the Lamborghinis, we've already seen some of them. You also have the Ferrari 296 out there, the BMW M4 GT3. Of course, the Mercedes AMG GT3 Evo as well. The latest and greatest GT3 cars. The Audi R8 out there too. Just, uh, I think, Vasil Yekov in one of them. Uh, and Atanas Stoyanov as well. A couple of drivers getting it wrong in the early stages of this session then, but that's to be expected in the rain. But no one yet has managed to go quicker than Chris Vrazilov. His time of a 153.303 still stands as the marker at the moment. Second fastest, just over a hundredth of a second off, is Philip Koenig in the number 26 Porsche. So Koenig right up there as the 32 taking a very uh, liberal and sideways approach there one of the uh, i think ferraris off track there as well this car the number 32 in the hands of stefan bastangiev a name that will be familiar to a lot of you from the world of uh, gt racing first came across him myself in uh, adac gt masters as well as the gt winter series paddocks he is a top talent both in the uh, in a carbon fiber car with a bucket seat and indeed at home with his sim setup a very very fast driver philip koenig is definitely going to be a favorite in this as well another fabulously turned out machine there the number 26 porsche 992 the porsches look very strong here at the autodromo international do algarve Let's see what his lap time is looking like. He's just coming around the final corner now. Doesn't look like this lap is on for an improvement from the information I can see. But let's see if that changes as he comes across the line to complete the lap. Oh, it is quicker. A 153.121. That last sector netted him a lot of time. That was very impressive from Koenig. Koenig goes top then. He sets a new benchmark. Will anyone go sub 153 over the course of that this session? That is the big question. There is the 37 just coming around now. That is the uh, machine of Anton Stratiev. Anton looking to move his way a bit further up the order, currently in 11th position in the Yekov Rally School red entry, but uh, not a red car. I was hoping that the uh, colours would coordinate. We also have magenta and blue Yekov Rally School entries out there. This lap clearly not one that's going to be an improvement then for, for him. He goes into pit lane. Number nine coming around the final corner now. This is Martin Yankov in the reserve racing entry quick around the final corner nice line carried the momentum tidily through that corner crosses the line now remains in 17th so no improvement there the 34 now is our next across the line the belgian racer roy verveik the auto mech driven or the auto mech prepared machine Across the line now, and what kind of time does Roy put in? Not one good enough for an improvement by the looks of it. Here it comes our provisional pole sitter again, Philip Koenig. Is he into the pits? Yes, he is. I was going to say, if he thinks he's got more pace in the arsenal, then that's a, a concerning sign for everybody else. There are only four cars currently in this session under a 1 minute 54. Those are Philip Koenig. Chris Vrasiliev, Viktor Varbanov, and Boyko Shopov. That's our top four in the session. Everyone from Yulian Dimitrov down is in a 154 position. So only th four cars out there at the front within the uh, bracket. And that is quite the statistic as well, isn't it? That means that uh, just four drivers within a, a second of each other. That's not normally what you see in GT3 racing. 153.1 
is a very fast time in these conditions around Portimao. I'm not sure anyone else is going to best him in the next seven minutes and 40 seconds, but I also didn't think Koenig was going to improve his lap time when he crossed the line to set our provisional pole, so maybe I am in the wrong completely here. There is the number five of uh, Daniel Markov just making way for some others on faster flying laps by the looks of it. Almost uh, factory colours on that vertical grip entry. That car running uh, eighth overall at the moment. As you can see, the first of our uh, AM-class drivers in the field at the moment is uh, Venceslav Raichinov. Uh, another of the negative Delta SRT drivers. So, Rajinov having a good run at the moment. He clearly likes these wet conditions. Of course, the arrival of wet weather into iRacing has uh, rather subverted expectations for some drivers, of course. Those who have solely focused their sim programs over the years on iRacing haven't really had to learn the intricacies of wet weather driving only very recently introduced into the world of iRacing so not everyone who lives and breathes this platform is quite there yet there's Vasil Yekov he's the fastest of the Audi drivers at this time running in 17th position Oh, the Porsche's running very, very wide there at uh, turn five. A little kink as they go past the VIP viewing area is, officially speaking, turn number six. So easy then to drift wide going through turn seven, the corner they're going through at the moment. Uphill through turn eight as well. Quite easy to lose the rear there if you're too happy on the power. There's quite a few sections that that applies to. Turn four. They've just gone through there among them. With how much elevation change there is on this circuit, there's quite a few places where the track simply drops away from you. Here's the first turn as well. You've got to be very careful of that sausage curb uh, in uh, any conditions, although all of the curbs in the wet are probably best avoided. Still no changes towards the sharp end. Koenig still with the benchmark of 153.121, but up into second uh, place there. In fact, I think it was uh, up into fourth place, sorry, when uh, Vladislav Shopov, Daniel Markov also improving to go third position. We're starting to see some very quick lap times emerging on the board. Uh, Julian Janowski. In the up to 50 car, the number 11 that you just see going through turn one there, he's just gone sixth fastest as well. Another JRS colored machine. There's a lot of improvements going on late in the session, so maybe everybody's just now starting to get their eye in. We now have more drivers under that 154 benchmark. The top seven now under top eight even under a 154 lap time but Philip Koenig still with the 153-1 as the benchmark that everyone else has to adhere to another improvement there up to fifth place goes Georgi Rachev the driver who finished P3 in the standings last year Viktor Varbanov of course last year's champion in uh, the or last season's champion in this series he is uh, in sixth position right now in the number 30 so the season seven champ is right up there in the top 10 as well now we've got just over three minutes left to go that's more or less two laps left if you can just cross the line now you'll get two more laps to try and improve of course these gt3 cars always such a handful in wet conditions as well big tires on these things huge tire width 
And while that provides you a lot of grip going into the uh, dry conditions in the wet, that just means there's a bigger contact patch and more chance of aquaplaning. Vasil Yekov goes fourth fastest in the Audi. So the Audi is starting to find its feet now with Yekov at the wheel. Not so much the 28 Mercedes, which I think is just recovering from a spin there. That's uh, Mihail Velikov, who's down in 26th at the moment. Looks like that car is not complying with his wishes particularly. Quite smart car, though. Looks a bit of a, an Austrian flag tribute, if anything. But uh, certainly a car that's uh, not really working for him at the moment. In fact, all of the Mercedes are away down the order. 26th fastest, Mihal Vekilov, the, fast, uh, the first of the Mercedes out there, which is uh, quite a, a surprise if you're unfamiliar with uh, how they're balanced in iRacing. 18 minutes and 15 seconds complete in this 20-minute qualifying session then. There you see the second of the two Audis entered, just being uh, overtaken by the number six, Vladislav Shopov. That was uh, Antonaz Stoyanov. You're not going to miss those wheels anywhere, are you? If he parks that in the, uh, in the supermarket car park, he will find it. Crossing the line goes the number 23 car there. Another of the negative delta entries. That is uh, Venceslav Rashinov, who is, I think, still fastest among the AM runners by the looks of it. He's listed green on your, uh, on your graphics there, but I believe he is an AM class driver. We're currently just outside the top 10 in the overall standings as well with quite a few pro cars between himself and anybody else that he's fighting for points so that could be advantageous crossing the line now is the 81 no improvement i don't think there from Jordanian Svetanov and he Backs out after that. Here comes the number three as well. Lambo across the line. Georgi Rachev at the wheel. That time didn't look like it was going to be improvement, but it was actually. Those last, uh, the first two sectors didn't look fabulous. However, goes third fastest, Georgi Rachev. And the session ends as the clock hits 20 minutes with Philip Koenig then on pole position so Koenig has your pole Chris Vasilyov is going to be second of all out there on the circuit Georgi Rachev and Daniel Markov Georgi Rachev the first of the non-Porsches there in third place alongside Markov Vasil Yekov fifth sixth fastest Vladislav Shopov Viktor Vabanov in seventh place Yulian Dimitrov in eighth Yulian Janovsky in ninth Boyko Shopov in 10th position. Then the first of your AM cars, Ventislav Ryshinov. Second, uh, 12th place, sorry, for Pavel Ivanov. Row 7 of the grid, Rotislav Koshev and Anton Strav uh, Stratyev. 15th place for Bozidar Andreev and Georgi Antonov alongside. Then it is uh, Roy Verve Eke in the Belgian entered number 17 car. That's an Automech entry, that Porsche. Stefan Bastanjev in 18th second among the AM class runners. Svetanov and Serafimov rounding out the top 20. From there, it's Martin Yankov on row 11. Bozidar Paravo, uh, Pavanov in 22nd. Radi von Den... Oh, well, that's a long one. Radi von Denicharov in uh, 23rd. My apologies, Radi. Alexander Nikolov in 24th. Ivelo Dimitrov in 25th alongside Mihail Velikov. 27th, Alexander Nikolov, alongside Vladimir Mavrodi uh, Mavrodiev. I'll try that one again later. Krastin Stanchev in 29th, alongside Asen Dramaliev. Uh, Milen Milchev in 31st place. Lazar Katsaraski in 32nd place. Final three through, through few rows of the grid. Antonas Stoyanov 
in 33rd alongside Vladislav Stefanov, Dimitar Palazov in 35th, and it's Kirchev and Martin M.J. Sampson at the rear of the field. 37 set to take the start then. A nice full grid of machinery. Now, Sampson, as best I saw, didn't actually complete a lap, I don't think. So then, the 20 lap heat is about to begin then. I think it is a 20 minute heat, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we are going to go racing in just a few moments time then one last opportunity to get their eye in the conditions they'll be hoping maybe uh, turn in their favor a little bit during this one 20 minute race will begin and they cross the line and philip koenig wants the safety car is out of the firing line will be the one dictating the pace he'll have the inside line of course into the first corner at least he should yes he will have the inside line into the first corner since it is a rolling start but of course the apex at turn one might not necessarily be where you want to be going into turn one you might yield some more grip on the karting line around the outside and that's something that chris Vasiliev is going to try and used to his advantage Rachev and Markov will be hoping of course that uh, it's all pandemonium up ahead of them and they can pick their way through there's one thing for certain with uh, 37 cars going into the first couple of corners uh, I don't think everyone is going to come out with no damage coming through the first few corners In that regard, they have uh, no fast repair to use in this. 17x penalty and 25x is a disqualification. So some leeway, but not much uh, for them to play with. If they uh, start to get the elbows out, they need to be careful of what they're doing across the race distance. Riding on board there from... The Lamborghini, I believe that's uh, Barbanov that we're on board with here. The Simgear GT3 Premier League is just a couple of corners away from roaring into action for the first time in this new season. Who will come out on top? Will it be Koenig that can control proceedings from the front? Will we see some heroics from further back on this grid? Safety car will peel off in a matter of seconds. Two by two formation as they go around the final corner here at the Autodromo Internacional do Algarve. Last few cars just joining the back of the queue now. Going to be in excess of 18,000 virtual brake horsepower flying across the line to begin this 20 minute race. The lights are on and we are underway. We are racing and it looks like it's a good start there from Philip Koenig. It's Koenig that leads the way some two and three wide further back in the field as everybody Picks their way through the corners, but it's Koenig that leads from Chris Vasiliev. Vladislav Shopov has moved up there to fourth position in the negative Delta SRT Porsche. One playing it very coy on the throttle, of course, in these treacherous conditions. As with GT3 cars, in the real-world scenario, of course, there is... Some ABS and traction control to play with, but you don't want to rely on it too much. That's not the quickest way around the course. Even in these conditions, some bumping and barging further back in the midfield as everyone tries to get it stopped at uh, turn four. Up and over the crest they go for the first time. This corner or this section that they're going through now at the front of the pack really is the main drop-off point on the circuit. 
You fall almost down a cliff there before going through the fast turn eight. Now around turns nine and ten. As you can see, it's Porsche with the uh, power advantage or with the uh, capacity advantage out there on circuit uh, in the top ten right now. Overwhelming majority are Porsches. We've got one falling through the order. Yulian Dimitrov has fallen through the pack there. He must have had a moment further back. We're running through the top ten as they cross the line for the first time. Philip Koenig will be our leader at the end of lap one. Then it's Vrasiliev, Radchev, Shopov and Markov, your top five. Then it's Vasilyekov, who's down a position in sixth place. Varbanov, Janovsky, Raichinov and Anton Stratiev, your top ten. As we ride on board with Vladislav Shopov going through the first few kinks of the lap and a big move up the inside there. Full, full commitment. This, of course, is turn four. I miscounted on the previous lap, but this is turn four of the lap that they're just going through now. Trying to find his way through, trying to pick his way past the number three. And to the inside goes Georgi Ratchev for second place. Catches Chris Vrasiliev there with the inside open and moves up into second place. Vladislav Shopov then now needs to try and get past uh, one of the other negative Delta SRT machines as they run through turns six and uh, two turns seven and eight. Over the crest of the hill they go. With three minutes of this race already in the books. Philip Koenig already with a 1.5 second gap at the front, but the battle for second is a lot more close and a lot more intense at the moment. Riding from behind here with Georgi Ratchev. The Bulgarian racer, that was a big lunge from third place or two third place for Vladislav Shopov. It hasn't quite worked out for him, or has it, because he has the inside into the penultimate corner. You know what, I think he's managed to make that work. He's still got the inside line, but a traction advantage seemingly there momentarily for Chris Vasilyov. They go side by side through the final corner, and yes, Vladislav Shopov looks like he's going to make it work. He's got the inside for turn one. I can't imagine Vrasiliev holding on around the outside at the first corner, but great respectful racing between both of them as they cross the line to begin lap three. Shopov on the inside, Vrasiliev on the outside. I think Vrasiliev knew he had to yield there, and he does so. Very handy driving there from Vladislav Shopov. I thought he went far too deep into turn 12 there, but he managed to get it stopped. Very, very impressive from him. Vasil Yekov in sixth place there, looking to try and move his way into the top five. He'll be watching all of this for it with interest, and, well, he's not watching it with interest, he's getting involved as he tries to uh, tap his way past Daniel Markov there. That was quite aggressive. There is the Battle further back between two more of our Porsches. That's uh, Rachinov, the first of our AM drivers, having a, a very good race at the moment. He's up four positions ahead of uh, Julian Janowski there. Of the drivers that have moved up, I think the one that has done the most moving through is actually uh, Stefan Bastangiev, potentially. He's all the way uh, up in 10th now, having started from 18th. Just looking further down the list to see if anybody else has done similar. Vladislav Stefanov here running in 25th position. Further back in the pack and fighting. Daniel Markov, on the other hand, in the top five. They complete lap three this time. Let's see where Philip Koenig's lead is. It's still only at one and a half seconds. So now that Georgi Rachev has gotten through, he's really not losing time at all to our leader. He's just got to find those couple of extra tenths to go hunting for Koenig. Vasilyekov 
And right on board with him from sixth position in the Audi R8, the 5.2 litre V10, of course, in this Audi. Over the course of the past week, the final Audi R8 road car has left the production line, so the Audi R8 era coming to a close. The car that was, of course, named for the five-time Le Mans winning Le Mans prototype in the early 2000s. Vasil Yekov in the Yekov Rally School Magenta entry in his eponymous team. There's a lot of Yekov Rally School entries out there. Martin M. Sampson is up to 31st. Does look like he's got some damage on the front of that car, though, so he's been in amongst it a little bit. Driver flagged from UK and Ireland. The return to the battle for fourth place then. You can see that the top three have spread out a little bit and move further back in the pack for 16th there for Viktor Varvanov. Varvanov getting past the Porsche of um, Radi Bonden Vonicherov. Vodnitrov watching on in his red and yellow Porsche. Reminds me of the Exim Bank Corvettes from FIA GT1 back in 2011, those colours. Around the outside goes the 27 car Pavel Ivanov for VIP Racing. Here the flat sixes, of course, the naturally aspirated Porsche 992. Absolutely wonderful piece of machinery in its second year in racing. See the Manti colours there on the 911. Bozidar Andreev, and was that a car recovering there from a moment just ahead of him? I think it could have been Stefan Bastangiev to the inside and moving up to ninth position. Handily done there from Bastangiev, and that was a little bit of a block pass, I think, there. Just uh, slowed down at the apex, a little bit of contact between them, but Bastangiev then moving up to ninth position. Nicely done by him. That means nine positions gained over the course of this race. For Stangiev, who runs in the AM class. We get a replay here from the perspective of Viktor Varbanov. And he was just behind Vasil Yekov. Now, is the incident between them... Or is it a mistake? We'll see, is they... Make their way up through turn four. And the number 30, Varbanov, oh, just lost it on his own right in front of the Porsche. Quite well avoided there, I must say, um, by Yulian Janowski. But that explains why we saw a car recovering then. That was Viktor Varbanov, who is now down in 16th position, having been running in the top 10 all race to that point. Still just 1.6 seconds, the gap at the front of the order. So even though Philip Koenig built a nice gap early on while the others fought behind him, Georgi Rachev is by no means losing touch with our race leader. Koenig, who... Started this one from pole position, has yet to be anywhere other than first place across this race so far. He's showing up and showing out in this one. Vasil Yekov. We saw there, and here is Martin Yankov, just out, uh, just within the top 20 in 19th place. This is one of our AM class battles going on here. Yankov just pursuing uh, Paravanov. Koenig, who is racing for German Sim Racing. At the front of the order, the 
Battle for, I believe this is fourth in Am, goes off here. Yankov with the outside line around the sweeper, but then into nine and ten, he should have the inside. Can he get by the 24? That was down there. Nicely done. Past Par uh, Parvanov there for 18th and should be able to hold it around the outside, particularly in these wet conditions. Oh, goodness me. A bit of contact, but they make it work. And indeed, Yankov passed for P18 there. But more importantly, that is for fourth place within the AM class. 50 points for a win in this 20-minute sprint. 100 points on offer in the enduro later on. Raddy Vodinitarov in the 29. Just following the 11 car. The 11 car, of course, is Julian Janowski recovering from a moment of his own. He's gone down seven positions and he's still pursuing Viktor Varbanov, of course. It was Varbanov and Janowski, yeah, the two protagonists in that replay we saw a few moments ago. So they're both trying to recover their races at this stage. Trying to get themselves into a good position. And of course, 10th place is the most coveted position of all in this format, with the top 10 being reversed going into the going into the 40-minute race. That uh, means that uh, Anton Stratiev is currently in the strongest position of anyone in the back half of the top 10, but he needs to be careful not to lose that position. Otherwise, what will be pole suddenly becomes P11. There is... Uh, Rostislav Kochev in another of the JRS Porsches. As we get a replay from the perspective again of Julian Janowski. Now, Janowski has already had to do some evasive action in this race, as he had to do some more now. In fact, no, he's dropped down to 20th position on the road. So I think we're going to get a look at an error here for Janowski. Vasil Yekov and Daniel Markov are fighting out for fifth position while this is going on. And it was just using too much, expecting too much from the rear tyres there. Got them to, tried to get them to grip, but he was a good few kilometres of an hour faster than he should have been. Here is that battle I was talking about between Markov and Yekov. Yekov on the inside then in the Audi, trying to get up to fifth place. Going very, very much towards the inside. He's going to have a very tight angle to get around the corner. Too tight of an angle, as it turns out. He aquaplanes straight on, and that allows Ventislav Rachinov to move up. Rachinov, who is our AM class leader, is up to sixth position overall. So Rachinov is having a very, very strong race indeed at the moment. Moves like that, just keeping out of trouble when those ahead of you maybe aren't doing so well. It's how you make up positions in a wet race like this. The gap between our leader and Georgi Rachev in second place is extended. I think that's in no small part because Vladislav Shopov, as you can see, is crowding the rear of the Lamborghini. Rachev is now having to drive through the mirrors more so than through the windscreen. This, of course, is a resumption of the battle for second place in season seven. Chopov came second in the championship, just 13 points clear of Georgi Rachev last season. Now they're fighting it out for second overall as Svetinov there goes straight on. Ventislav Rachinov to the inside here of Markov. So Markov uh, almost losing out there. To our 23 driver, Rachinov, who appears to be a man on a mission. Rachinov has been stellar so far. And a top five finish would be more than 
a deserving result for him. And any position within the top 10 will still be a good, uh, strong starting place as well for the 40-minute race to come. 16 minutes and 18 seconds of this race in the books right now. So probably two laps to go this time by. Janowski has again fallen down. He's in 26th now, just tagging the rear of a Mercedes driven by Vladislav Stefanov. Vladislav Shopov, deal. Trying to find his way past Georgi Rachev, but this is proving to be a very, very difficult task as they approach turn 12. Deep, deep and deeper still into the penultimate corner there. That gives him a decent exit out of the turn, of course. Markov in fifth position here. Just pursuing Chris Vrasiliov. But moreover, <laughs> under a lot of pressure from Venceslav Rachinov in the negative at Delta SRT entry. And our AM class leader has a nose ahead. And this time he's later on the brakes into turn one as well. Oh, but not great traction out of the corner. Regardless, though, he is up into fifth place. So Daniel Markov gets demoted by the AM class leader. We've got two AM drivers within the top 10. Rachinov in fifth, Bastanjev in seventh. And then the next AM driver in third within the class is Radi Bodinicharov for IBR Racing. So quite a gap between our top two in AM and the rest of the order. The AM class cars, as you can see at the top of your screen, are listed in blue. The battle for second place on the penultimate lap of the race here. And who is going to come out on top? Chopov has been hunting for a way past all race long. He started this in sixth position, so he's made up some good places. But that one last overtake to get, get past Georgi Rachev has thus far eluded him. But was he waiting and just learning from Rachev? That is a possibility too. Vasil Yekov has dropped down as far as ninth place now in the Audi, so he's been struggling. And Yekov in a fight there with uh, Pavel Ivanov. And Ivanov has just gotten past him for ninth place. This, though, could be the move from Vladislav Shopov. He got a great run through the final corner. He's got the inside line. He's got a headlight ahead in the Porsche on the inside line as they run down towards the first corner. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Rachev? Is it going to be Shopov? Rachev drifts wide at turn one. And now tries to cut to the inside line at turn three. Three. Oh, goodness me, a bit too close for comfort there. Vladislav Shopov just squeezing Rachev out of the inside line. But it is Vladislav Shopov then up into second place. This fight has been rather distracting both parties. Philip Koenig is now 7.3 seconds clear, so he's safe at the front. Yekov trying to find his way back into ninth place. Goes side by side with turn four there with uh, Ivanov. Very respectful driving. They both got through there without contact. Uh, behind them, I think that is, uh, it was Viveki, but he just had a moment. The Automech Porsche in the background there in a spin. Was just trying to get the shallow line, get the inside into turn five. And that's cost him in a big way. The Vake will rejoin the race down in 15th place then as this battle for a 10th place continues. Philip Koenig, though, just a corner or two away from a race victory to kick off his season. Rounds the final turn for the final time. And it will be a win for Koenig for Porsche.
And for German Sim Racing, he crosses the line to win the first Sim Gear GT3 Premier League race of the season. Shopov just holds off Georgi Rachev to finish second. Rachev will be happy with a podium. Brasiliov has taken fourth place, fifth place to Rachinov, Markov sixth, Bastanjev in seventh. Of course, Rachinov, the first of our AM drivers home as well. And the Audi just about holding on to P10. Uh, so behind Andreev and Ivanov in eighth and ninth, Vasil Yekov just about took 10th place there. I wasn't sure he was going to stay in the top 10, but he's achieved it. And of course, with that will come the pole position in at the 40 minute race later on. Lots of uh, jockeying for positions further back. Third in Am is going to come through next. It has done now. Uh, 18th place finisher, Radi Vod uh, Vodin Vodinichirov. I'll get there eventually. Everybody else working their way across the line. And that will have been a very long 20 minutes for some. We see someone spinning in the Mercedes towards the back of the order right at the end of the race. That was... Uh, Vladislav Stepanov having a moment at the very last corner for Red Zone Racing. Finally crosses the line. We get a replay here of the moment for Roy Vivek. Had a good run out of turn four in the Automec Porsche. Of course, had the two obstacles in front of him in the form of uh, the Audi and the Porsche. And he would eventually end up in a spin. Bringing a premature end to his race there. Just getting the power down too early. Which is so easy to do. Here then are your Heat 1 results. Philip Kurnev, uh, your winner by 7.1 seconds over Vladislav Shopov. Georgi Rachev third. Chris Vasilyov in fourth. Your first M driver home. A very, very strong result uh, from Rachinov. Daniel Markov taking sixth place ahead of Stefan Bastanjev, Andreev, Ivanov, and Yekov rounding out your top 10. And it will be Yekov, Vasil Yekov, uh, on pole for the top 10 reverse grid race that follows this. Uh, Anton Stratiev is next from there. Anstonov in 12th, 13th for Varbanov. Vivek recovering to 14th after his spin ahead of Yankov, Kochev, Svetanov, and Von Denicherov in 18th place, third among the AM drivers. From there, it was uh, Bozidar uh, Paravanov in 19th place, 20th position for Shopov. And uh, you can see the rest of the order there. 21st, Stanchinev, Serafimov in 22nd, Janowski 23rd after a very challenging race for him. Lots of dramas over the course of that race distance. 24th place for Nikolov, uh, Alexander Nikolov, and then Alexander Nikolov as well in 25th place. So two very similar names there in 24th and 25th. Vladislav, 20, uh, Vladislav Stefanov in 26th after his spin at the end. Katzarski in 27th. Mavrodiev in 28th position. 29th place for Martin M.J. Sampson, who I think ended his race without front body work. Milan, uh, Milen Milchev in 30th position. From there, Palaznov, Dmitrov, Velikov, Stoyandi, Dramiliev, Kirchev, and Dim uh, Dimitrov, your 37 car order. Not everyone reaching the flag there. Not everyone reaching 70% distance either. Uh, those that don't reach 70% distance will not receive points in the championship. Uh, scarcely few points, of course, available if you are that far down the order. Uh, but it all counts for something. 50 points for a race win. 47 points for second place. 45 for third. And then from there, it goes down in one. So fourth place is 44 points. Fifth place, 43, etc., etc. Uh, so that means that... Uh, you don't lose too much if you drop a position in the late stages. Of course, double points in the double distance race that follows this. 100 points on offer for a win in that one. So then.
Welcome then to race number two. The 10 minute warm up session has taken place while we were on ad breaks there. And our thanks to our partners for backing this broadcast. Vasil Yekov, as we said, 10th place in at the sprint. That gives him pole position for the feature race. He'll have Pavel Ivanov alongside him in second place. Bozidar Andreev in third position. And he is alongside Stefan Bestandiev. He will be the first of the AM drivers. And he's there on the second row as well. Stefan could be one to watch here. Markov equally in third place. He could have a strong result from there. And what about Ventsislav Rachinov? He was the AM winner last time. He'll start from sixth place. Chris Vrazilyov in seventh. Georgi Rachev starting from eighth position. Vladislav Shopov in ninth place. And then, of course, the big test for Philip Koenig. He's proven that he can lead and run away. What can he do from 10th place? Anton Stratiev in 11th position. Georgi Ant uh, Antonazov in 12th position. Viktor Varbanov in 13th. Roy Vervaek in 14th position. 15th place for Martin Yankov. 16th place, Rotzislav Kochev. We have just had one drop out, I think, there. Uh, Martin Yankov in 16th place. Jordan Svetanov in 17th place as they go rolling on the formation lap. Raddy uh, Von, Von Denitrov in 16th place. But they're all uh, just shaking on my screen at the moment. 19th position for uh, Bozidar Parvanov. 20th place for Boyko Shopov. 21st place is Stanchev. 22nd is uh, Serafimov 23rd. Keep an eye on Julian Janowski. He had a very quick race until it started going horribly wrong. He'll have to make up some positions from 23rd. Alexander Nikolov in 24th place. 25th is Alexander Nikolov. 26th is Vladislav Stefanov. 27th is Latar Katsarowski. Vladimir Mavrodiev in 28th. Martin Sampson, 29th. Milen Milchev in 30th place. Uh, Palazov Dimitrov, Vel, uh, Velikov, Stoyanov, Dramaliev, and Kirchev will be on your 18 rows and then one on row 19. That is Yolian Dimitrov at the back of the pack. So then we are ready on our formation lap for this one. That 20-minute uh, race was very exciting. And now, of course, we have a, a bit of an added factor. The 40-minute race is a longer-distance race, and it is a race where they will have to do some refueling. Uh, tire change only if you need to move from wets to dries. We'll have to see whether the conditions dry out at all over the course of this race distance. So that could be something to keep an eye on as well, whether or not anybody has to make the decision uh, to shift on to dry tyres that somehow doubt it, looking at some of those clouds overhead. But hey, this is iRacing. This is a, a fairly new uh, model, the weather system. And it could throw up some surprises over the race distance. I love the touch of uh, the Bullers colours on the uh, on the Porsche there, the 911 of uh, Bozidar Andreev. You see that he's got the Grello coloured uh, windscreen banner there. That is a, that's a very nice touch. Uh, some wonderful colour schemes on the grid. Some very, very fast drivers on the grid, as they've proven in that earlier race. And some drivers didn't really get the best luck in the race previously. That much is for certain. Vasil Yekov, I think, in particular, got bullied a couple of times in that race. But it's a bully. he bullied himself down to 10th place. So he has pole position. And he could take advantage of that, although he's got Porsches and Lamborghinis all over the back of him in the only Audi within the top 20. We'll see whether he can hold on. We'll see what Philip Koenig can do from position number 10 as well. The feature race, 40 minutes of racing will begin when the red lights go on at the top of your screen. It will be Stefan Bastangiev, the first of the AM drivers there with Rachinov, the two drivers that ran away with the AM standings in the previous race. Let's see if they can do it again as season eight, race two will begin. The first feature race of the Simgear GT3 Premier League season will begin in just a few short seconds. Wait for the wall of noise. The red lights go out. 
The throttle pedals fly, and they do so now. We go racing. Crossing in two by two formation. Everyone looking for some track space as they run down to the first corner, and it's Yekov that will lead it. No, it won't be. We've got one car skittling everybody further back, sliding across the first corner. Actually manages to gather it quite nicely there on the motorcycle chicane. One tagged into a spin further back. I didn't quite see the number on that. It may well have been one of the... Lamborghinis. It was one of the Lamborghinis, but I didn't see quite whom it was. At the front of the order, though, it's Yekov from Andreev, who tried to launch it up the inside at the first corner. Couldn't get it done. Another drama further back. Lots of cars in, the, in a spin on the way towards turn five. And falling through the order there, Ra uh, Radi von Dinitrov, one of them falling back. So he was certainly involved, as was one of the BMWs, I think. But it's Yekov from Andre, from Markov and Ivanov, your top four. And one of the drivers that was involved was Stefan Bastangiev. He's dropped down. In fact, both of our leading AM cars have fallen foul of that drama. Rachinov and Bastangiev are now in 35th and 36th positions. So that explains where they've gone. It's an all pro top 10 now. As deep into turn 12 goes the 911 of Andreev in second place. Well, we had a fairly incident free beginning to race number one that has not carried over to the feature race. More points on the line, more championship points play and clearly Having had a very kind and courteous first race, things are now getting a bit harder. Uh, the Viveki Porsche has damage. He's got uh, his splitter missing. So he's going to have a, a downforce uh, handicap. He's come into pit lane, I believe, as you'd expect. As side by side here. Further back in the field, that's the number six car. This is for sixth position. Georgi Rachev just ahead of Vladislav Shopov. Again, these two have found each other and are fighting. This time they've got Anton Stratiev just behind. Well, who was the big gainer as we get a replay here? This is Philip Koenig. Oh, Koenig dropped down as well. I didn't spot that Philip Koenig was involved. So our race winner from earlier on was one of the drivers involved on the run from turn four to turn five in an impact. So he now has a lot of work to do. He's up in 21st, however, but the biggest gainer of all on lap number one was Janowski, who started 23rd and is already up in 10th place. Here's Koenig making up positions further back, going through and past the number 10 Ferrari. And so the winner of the earlier race is having to do a catch-up game here. Or is this a replay of the actual collision? Oh, this is a replay of another incident, actually. So Alexander Nikolov, in the number 10, ended up... Oh, goodness me, in the uncomfortable position of being sideways on after a collision there. Koenig tried to fold across the front of him. And the resulting impact sent the Ferrari into a spin. So a lot going on on that first lap. Chaos, pandemonium, everything's on fire. But thankfully, the top two are okay. Bozidar Andreev is right there behind Vasil Yekov. Oh, Yekov with a bobble there coming out of the corner. Yekov just had to catch a slide, I think. And that has allowed Andreev through into the lead. Andreev from Yekov, from Markov, your top three. But here comes Pavel Ivanov. Ivanov, who started in second place, trying to get back onto the podium positions. He can't do it there. Andreev strayed very wide at the first corner as well. Of course, he has to make sure he doesn't do that too much. Yekov is really starting to struggle now. He's down to third place behind Markov. The Audi is starting to hemorrhage positions. Here goes... Ivanov passed him as well. He's got the inside line for turn five as well, Pavel Ivanov, in the VIP racing entry. So I think that's a position gained. Yes, third place to Ivanov. The Porsche's looking very, very strong indeed. In the top 12, it is 10 Porsches. That tells you a lot. Svetanov in 13th place then. 
He is uh, just pursuing the number seven car of Rostislav Kochev. So Svetanov well up the order. I believe leading in, uh, no, not leading in AM, that's uh, Vodinetrov who is leading in the AM class. Kirchiv in 24th position. He's fighting to try and make his way up the order in the second of the Mercedes in our standings. We've got a spin there from one of the Lamborghinis and also a tag there from Pavel Ivanov. Ivanov was on the inside and Markov leaned on him. So Vasil Yekov now with an opportunity to try and get back to the inside of Ivanov, but he can't quite take it. Oh, and away into the pit lane has gone Markov. Markov there got taken out. Now, was that a DQ? Was that a disconnect? I don't know. But Andreev uncontested at the front of the order. Bozidar Andreev in the lead. Pavel Ivanov in second place. 2.6 seconds is now the gap. If you're following Philip Koenig's progress, he's now up in 17th position. We've lost a few drivers from this race already. Bostanjev, Rachinov, and Vivek have all ended up out of the race. They're definitively stuck there now in the pit lane. As for Markov, I'm yet to fully grasp what's happened there, but uh, we'll see. Our order then on lap four of this 40-minute race. It's Andreev leading by two seconds over Ivanov in second place. Krasilyov in third position. Zhekov in fourth place. In fact, Ivanov has just gone into the lead, and that implies that Andreev has had a moment. Andreev is down to second place. Now, he was struggling a little bit on some of the corners, I think, to get the car stopped and turned in. And what was a two-second lead is now nothing, and we're going to get a look at why. Our race leader was coming up through towards the second sector as Anton Stratiev has had a moment and is falling down the order. Let's get a look at why the lead changed. Now, he got onto the kerbs, getting ready to turn into the right-hander, and just the rear letting go. We've seen that already a few times at that very corner during this event. And this time it cost the leader dearly. Pavel Ivanov, your new race leader. But it's side by side for the lead at the moment as we come back to live pictures. And Andreev again with a spectacular run out of the final corner. So Ivanov must have had to catch a slide a bit like uh, Yekov did a couple of laps ago. And so back to the lead is the Grello Porsche. Andreev, Ivanov, Krasilyov. Uh, Vrazilov, I should say, in fourth, uh, in third place. Then it's Yekov. Then it's Shopov in fifth position. But the top four broken away. And in fact, uh, Anta Atanazov in fifth and is fifth is fighting for fifth place uh, with the number six. The negative Delta SRT machine having to uh, defend here against the number three. Just. Uh, Everyone trying to get the power down in what is a very big train of cars from 5th down to something like 12th, 13th place. Viktor Varbanov is down in 20th position, as you can see here. He was one of the ones who had a, a bit of a moment on the first lap, I think. It was his Lamborghini at one point that was facing the wrong way at turn 2. Ivo Serafimov trying to find his way past uh, Parvanov just ahead in this battle for 22nd place. Koenig is up to 14th as we get a look at uh, Anton Stratiev, who's now down to 16th. So he was running very well earlier on, but he's been making mistakes. And I think we're going to see the latest of them here. The reason that he is now down into 16th place Oh, and actually, no, it was a bit deeper than that. It was the number three of Rachev that spun. And while everyone tried to take avoiding action, 
Anton Stratiev got tagged. Now, we saw Stratiev falling through the order while we were looking at uh, Bozidar Andreev's moment. So that's what happened there. Oh, and a spin for the BMW. There was a spin there just ahead of uh, that battle. Now, who was that? I think it might have been Alexander Nikolov. Yes, it was. One of two Alexander Nikolovs on the grid, much to my uh, bemusement. Philip Koenig in 14th position, just going past our AM class leader for P13 overall. So, Vodinitrov is having a pretty strong run here. He's uh, staying out of trouble where some of his co colleagues have uh, certainly failed to. We have, of course, seen the Stangiev and Rachinov withdraw from the race. They were the top two in AM previously. And this race has not worked out for them. In the pits at the moment is uh, Alexander Nikolov after his spin. Again, over the course of this 40-minute race, we're expecting refueling. Tires will only change if the conditions require it and certainly we haven't seen any um, ceasefire from the rain clouds so far Pavel Ivanov has not lost touch with Bozidar Andreev in the slightest and give Vasil Yekov his credit he made a mistake that cost him some positions early in the race but since then he stayed with the top three and is still very much a contender in this race they power across the line now to begin lap seven. With 11 minutes and 55 seconds left on the clock. And at no point has the lead looked comfortable for anybody. As Ivanov has a look to the inside at turn one. Wasn't close enough. Rostislav Kochev in eighth place here. Just pursuing Janowski, who has had a fabulous race to this point, has gained 16 positions. Julian Janowski in the number 11. A fabulous race so far. He was into the top 10, or at least the top dozen, at the end of the first lap, having started all the way down in the 20s. Janowski has been exemplary so far. Atanas Stoyanov having a look to the inside there, but that was almost a uh, little bit of contact between them. Well, there was an iota, but thankfully it didn't have any negative effect on anybody. Got more cars in the pits at the moment. Velikov is also in, and I think Nikolov has stayed in the pit lane. We won't see him back out in the BMW after his spin earlier. Janowski, meanwhile, Having made up so many positions early in the race, is now in that seventh position and really struggling to find a way past Georgi Atanasov. A power towards turn 13 of the lap, and as of right now, nothing doing for the 11. Another driver who's made good progress through the field in this race is Boyko Shopov. He's up 10 positions from 20th to 10th place. Let's see if Rostislav Kochev can make use of that very, very good run through the final corner. He's got the inside line. He's got the high ground against Janowski here. He's pulling alongside. Uh, Janowski still has a nose ahead. And sure enough, that is enough to retain the lead in this battle. He will stay in seventh position for now. Be right on board with Rostislav Kochev. He'll be studying the lines of Atanasov and Janowski behind and trying to figure out where they're weak, where he's strong. One thing that we have to watch out for as well, the AM battle. Um, it has so far been Raddy Bodinicharov fairly clear he's just been overtaken on circuit there by the 30 or well not by the 32 lamborghini that is a stefan bastangiev back out there after many laps 
in pit lane. So Bostangiev is out there. Uh, but the big BMW behind is the point of interest, I think. Uh, Krastin Stanchev only two or three seconds clear, or just two or three seconds back from the AM leader. And it strikes me that v Vodinicharov has been a little bit slower over the last few laps, and that could allow Stanchev back into it, especially with some of the recovering pro drivers fighting through. Oh, dear. Doyanov there tagging the uh, Castrol Ferrari. You heard that correctly. Castrol Ferrari. Um, Asen Dramaliev. And that was down at turn five. One of the pinch points of the circuit. Quite the uh, unique combination of colours and car that. The Castrol livery. Dual Ferrari. And that is a combination of carbon fiber, virtual carbon fiber, but no less painful to watch. And recovering in front of everybody there. Dramaliev there and Dimit uh, Dimitar Palazov coming together. Yordanin Svetanov in 11th place, watching on, trying to get his way into the top 10 here. Every point helps at the end of the season. This low down the order, each position is only worth two points if you gain it, but that's more than enough to be worthwhile. Just ask Parvanov. That was a big dive there for 19th place up against Vladislav Stefanov, and ultimately that's allowed the Lamborghini of Yulian Dimitrov to go past both of them at once. Georgi Rachev is getting closer and closer to the top 10 as well, having had a rotten start to the race with his mistake earlier on, coming uh, down through turns 11 and 12, well, turns 10 and 11, I should say. He, of course, had that spin. And he's now up in 11th place. He's just gotten himself past Svetanov, as you can see. His next target is Boyko Shopov. Also making up places, as you can see in the back of shot, is Philip Koenig. He's just gotten side by side there with Svetanov. He's got the outside line through 11. And he has gotten through. So Philip Koenig just behind Rachev is in 12th place. Two of the quickest drivers in our first race are hunting down that top 10. With 17 minutes and 40 seconds left to go, it's difficult to imagine them challenging for a podium but the pace is clearly there funnily enough the fastest lap of the race belongs to Ventislav Rachinov all the way down in 37th place a 154.338 for him as the lead battle has gotten very much closer it's now a three-way scrap three cars covered by less than a second Andreev from Ivanov from Vrasiliev we ride on board with Ivanov in second place of course this is the unenviable position to be in here you've got to spend your time studying to find a way past the leader but you've also got to not fall into the clutches of Vrasiliev while you're at it so often you see someone in this situation make a lunge for the lead and end up a distant third place and see the strengths and weaknesses of each driver. Some drivers just have a deft foot. They understand how to modulate the throttle, how to keep the car out of the traction control, how to find traction in general in these wet conditions. It seems like Ivanov is particularly strong there through the middle of the lap. Very fast indeed. Now into turn 12. Here is Vladislav Shopov around the outside of Vasil Yekov here for fourth position. The negative Delta SRT machine around the outside. Drag race to the final corner. I think the Porsche is going to have this one made unless Yekov can have a very good run through the final corner. He's on the inside line. And there's just a bit more adhesion to find on the outside in these conditions. And that allows Shopov through into fourth position. We are starting to see some pit stops further back in the field, but the front runners are yet to pit. 
Parvanov has pitted. So Parvanov is the first of those to really do a scheduled pit stop, I think. He's down in 19th position. Here come our top three. Now, it strikes me that the... Unless I'm very much mistaken, it strikes me that the rain has stopped falling as well. So, will we see a drying line? Will we see anyone? Brave the idea of a slick tyre. Martin Yankov just following Rostislav Kochev at the moment. No indication of rain on the... Uh, timing either merely says that it's cloudy conditions right now so they're only dealing with the standing water and the spray and will that dissipate quick enough oh that's a big moment for Kochev another one of those moments that we've seen so much of at turn seven just losing the rear I was just speculating about whether or not the circuit would dry out and it's just starting to break, isn't it? The clouds are just starting to break and the sun is just starting to peek through. BMW spinning in the back of shot as well. I think that was Nikolov again. He's rejoined the race and was in another spin as Shopov falls down to 11th place. So Georgi Rachev is now in ninth position and Philip Koenig is back where he started in 10th place after losing all of that ground early on. The race winner from earlier on in the 20-minute sprint is now up to P10. He's got a long road ahead of him. But can he get a strong points finish out of this race? Oh, Shopov on the slippery painted sections there. You don't want that. Here we see a replay of the 32. That's Bastangiev again having a moment, and this race goes from bad to worse. He's several laps down. So then we ride with Boyko Shopov once again. Just behind him is uh, Svetanov, who is having a fairly strong run of it at the moment. How are the lap times doing now? We're still in the 55 56 kind of bracket at the moment in fact everybody seems to be in that kind of 55 56 ballpark we haven't started to see the times really fall yet so i don't know that we're going to get dry conditions in time here the leaders working their way through lap traffic and of course that's going to be more of a factor in this longer race as well bosidar andreev with pavel ivanov Still welded to his mirrors and oh goodness me again Andreev he likes the wide line I think he does that with some level of intention but it does leave that inside open and often when you're racing you shouldn't leave that open you shouldn't uh, leave the opportunities there people will kick the door down and go through it into the pits comes our leader Andreev is the first of the front runners to make a pit stop 23 minutes into this race. So he's in for a stop. Let's have a look where he comes back out and let's see how many follow suit. Nobody in the top five went into the pit lane besides him. In fact, no one in the top 10 besides Andreev has decided to stop. Rostislav Kochev has pitted. So we are now firmly within the pit window by the looks of it as the top three continue to scrap. It's now Ivanov, Brazilov and Vladislav Shopov who are fighting it out at the front. Meanwhile, your AM lead has changed hands. Rodi Vonicharov has had a drama somewhere. He's down outside the top 20 now and is coming into the pit lane, which means that Krastin Stanchev is now leading in the BMW within the AM category. Now, will we see anybody consider a pit stop for tyres as well as uh, fuel? A lot of them are going quicker out there now, so it certainly is drying out. 
Philip Koenig. Right there behind Georgi Rachev, two of our quickest drivers down in eighth and ninth position after their various dramas out on the circuit. Former leader Andreev has rejoined the race in 15th position with a pit stop around 48 seconds. Here comes our leading cars, and you see there Ivanov and Krizilov, uh, or <laughs> Vrazilov, sorry, both coming in. So Chris Vrazilov and Pavel Ivanov both in. Vasil Yekov joins them. So does Georgi Atan uh, Atanasov. So that means that uh, this is clearly the time to pit. Everybody, uh, well, a vast majority of everybody is pitting right now. As you can see on the graphics, 5th through 13th places all in the pit lane at the moment. Of course, they'll continue to fall through the order until they get back out there. Now, let's see what uh, Bozidar Andreev, uh, where his position is on track relative to everybody else. You can see the dry line developing as well as Vrazilov comes back out onto the circuit. Where is the 911 car? It's gone through. So the Grello car, the Manti Colors, continue to lead the way it looks as if they've lost a little bit of time to the aggregate race leader Janowski is running in second place at the moment because he is yet to make a pit stop as we take a look here at uh, Lazar Katsarski oh and just as we cut to him he has a moment someone sent the cameras but be careful with how he rejoins. He's on the wet paint, and that's making it very hard for him to find some traction. Um, if I, if Elo Dimitrov has uh, lost some of his front end, in fact, he's lost all of his front end. If you've ever wanted to take a look at what goes on under the uh, canopy, the front end of a Ferrari 296, well, just ask... Uh, Ivelo Dimitrov, that car is uh, looking rather second-hand. Doesn't seem to be handling too poorly. Obviously, will be a bit understeery, but it's not the end of the world just yet. Philip Koenig, who, of course, has pitted, is now up to eighth place. Dimitrov, I don't think, has made a pit stop yet. Indeed, he has not. So we're starting to get an impression of where everybody is with the pit stops, Shopov, Janowski, Rachev, and Svetanov. The front end drivers who didn't pit last time are all in there now. So pit stops firmly underway. Pit stops almost at their end. The window is almost over. Bozidar Andreev has already come past to continue leading ahead of Rosilov. Just exiting now is the number six of Shopov. Where will he rejoin? I think it could be fourth position. Philip Koenig is going to rejoin in fifth place by the looks of it, ahead of some of the drivers that were far ahead prior to the stop. So the undercut has worked very nicely for Koenig in fifth place. Janowski falling down the order as well. He was in the top ten. He's now down there in... 13th place. Now, is this a few drivers moving on to slicks, potentially? That could be the case. I wonder if anyone is going to be bold enough to make that call. The fastest lap at the moment is a 153.038 from Bozidar Andreev. Georgi Tanisov in seventh place as you can see fighting here with Yankov in sixth position Yankov may well have to yield here if Tanisov can find the inside line into nine and ten but he can't do it he gets offered the outside and nothing more Vasil Yekov is behind them in the Audi and of course he was in the top five prior to the pit stop window so he's lost out to Tanisov there on the gravel has slowed himself down and put himself into the clutches of Vasil Yekov. 
We're into lap 15 of the race. We'll begin lap 16 this time by. And here is the fight for third place. This is between Shopov and Ivanov. We'll run you through the order once this battle has calmed down a little bit and get you up to speed with where everyone is after the window. It is Bozidar Andreev, your race leader. Second place is Chris Vrazilov. Vladislav Shopov in third place and Pavel Ivanov fighting him for that position. Philip Koenig through the window as we see Stratiev moving up into 15th place. He's gone up and down the timing screen a bit and is now working his way back up. Koenig in fifth place. Yekov now getting through into seventh behind Atanas Atanasov in sixth. So Martin Yankov down from sixth to eighth in the last lap or so. Viktor Varbanov in ninth. Boyko Shopov rounding out your top ten. The first of the AM cars is Krastin Stanchev leading an AM class 1-2 for the BMWs. So the BMWs in this second race have proven to be the weapon of choice. Georgi Rachev has lost a lot of time. He's down in 18th place. Now, with him that far down, I just wonder if he's moved on to slick tyres because that pit stop must have taken longer. Here comes Rachev going past the 29, and that looked very easy. So has Rachev gone on to slicks? The poise of that car and the way he's uh, attacking the course with cop. Well, never mind. <laughs> I think he was on slicks, and he just tried to accelerate on a painted curb. And unfortunately, you see the end result for Georgi Rachev. That's a huge shame for him. I laugh only because of how quickly my words bit back against him. Unfortunately, I think he may well have been on slicks, but the uh, traction was not underneath Georgi Rachev in the slightest there. Side by side between Yekov and Koenig. Koenig, I think, has lost out there. He was, wasn't he? He was in fifth place. He's now down a position. What was his last lap, Philip Koenig? It was a... 150.002. So, no, it wasn't a slow lap, was it? So, I think maybe Yekov just getting past there on sheer pace. Now, Yekov was one of those drivers that did lose some time, and I wonder if he has switched onto slicks. Andreev has lost the lead. Vladislav Shopov, then, is your race leader. Andreev was under threat. Andreev is now in second place. The Mantai Porsche has been one of the uh, front runners all day long in this 40-minute enduro. We we're kind of expecting him to hold on, but no. Vladislav Shopov has gotten through for negative Delta SRT. 9.11 car. He's down to P2 as we get a look at uh, Svetanov. Just trying to turn in at turn three with his tyres on the slippery curbing. And that was the end result there. Another illustration of just how treacherous it is out there. The drivers of the Sim Gear Premier League are really having to work at the moment. In 10th place here is Kochev. You see the gaps at the top 10 are all very small. Everyone within the same 10 or 15 second range. Here comes Yekov, who is clearly, I think, on the slick tyres because he has a lot more pace. He is going a lot quicker than those around him. Yekov is up to fourth place. And what's his lap time? A 146.7 versus... 151s for the two cars ahead of him. Shopov is on 148s as well, so I think he may have changed onto slicks. I think some of them have braved those slick tyres, and those that did have really started to move their way up. And just watching the timing screen as some of the other cars fight further back for Stangiev. Uh, just ahead of Boyko Shopov down in 10th place. Yekov was two seconds behind third place about 20 seconds ago. He's now within a second. So Yekov is about to make a move for third position just moments after getting by 
uh, for fourth place. He is on the move. Also on the move, just going through there, was uh, Kochev. Oh, well, that's Bostanjev again, isn't it, going past. He's, I think, maybe after some fastest lap points and saving a bit of face. We also saw in the background there that um, the 11 car seemed to be on the move a bit as well. In fact, no, that was a 31, sorry, of Boyko Shopov. Vasil Yekov is up to third place, though. This is what I was expecting to see. Yekov very, very quickly closing in. A 34 Porsche behind is not a, a factor, of course. That is the recovering Roy Vivek. A Tanisov fighting here with Koenig for sixth place. I think Koenig is one of those who stayed on the wet tyres. Tanisov comes by then. He moves up to P6. It's starting to become very clear who is on uh, slicks and who is on wets. The fastest lap of the race just came in from our leader as Georgi Rachev presses on past the AM lead battle. And the AM lead battle looks very tasty actually back there. In fact, sorry, that's second in AM under contest there. That was... Uh, Vodinicharov and Milchev fighting out for second in AM and Atanasov! Oh dear, you don't want the rear to lead you into the corner. But that's exactly what Atanasov had there. Oh gosh, again, you've just got to try and keep it on the black stuff. As stupid and simple, as rudimentary as that sounds, the curbs, the paint, the last bits to dry, the last bits to grip up. And Atanasov losing time there, dropping down to seventh place. But I was just saying about Shopov's pace. He's in the 144s out there. I love that Bastanchev just keeps showing up to fly past people as well as he's several laps down after his collision at lap one. You see Vasil Yekov's car is certainly not tidy either. There's some damage to the rear of that thing, but he doesn't care. He's moving it. He's using it to move up into third place here. Around the outside goes Yekov. He's going to be careful putting the traction down. And he was very nicely done up into third position for Yekov. Now with the pace of Shopov, who is some 14, and never mind, 18 seconds ahead of second place. I don't think Yekov can close in on him, but we're seeing firsthand here that the slick tyres are undoubtedly the way to go right now. Koenig dropping down to seventh place now. What a race he has had, moving up the order, down the order. Started 10th, ended up basically at the rear after a collision on the first lap. Got back up into the top five and is now falling through again as everyone on the correct tyres just flies past. Atanasov gets past the 27. Pavel Ivanov, who lest we forget, was leading the way or fighting for the lead at the very least before the pit window. But he decided not to make the stop. Those who made longer pit stops to move on to the slick tyres are now seeing it go in their favour. Kochev goes past Koenig, and behind him is the uh, recovering 11 car. Now, that's another car that's several laps down. I did think previously it was fighting for position, but Julian Janowski down in 24th place. So he's not a factor in the battle in the top 10, unfortunately. We have had a very dramatic mixed conditions race here, and we are into the final 90 seconds of it. Here is the battle for second place. Here is Bozidar Andreev. The inside line beckoning for Vasil Yekov. Yekov made that look very, very easy. He started on pole position, so he may feel like there was a missed opportunity in there somewhere, but this has been a very strong second half of the race for Vasil Yekov to move up into second place. The final lap of the race is the one that has been started by our leader, Vladislav Shopov, who is some 23 seconds clear now at the front of the order. Big moment there for Vasilyov, who loses out there to one of the Lamborghinis that's further back. And you can see here, even the cars that are a lap down are just firing past some of our fastest drivers in the league purely because of tyre choice. Kochev gets through into sixth place here at the expense of Pavel Ivanov. Philip Koenig is closing in on Ivanov as well, albeit both of them on the unfavoured treaded tyres. Shopov, meanwhile, in his own district, all on his own at the front of the order. The other Shopov, Boyko Shopov, in 10th place, 
he could yet uh, find his way past Yankov here at the final lap. You see the red and black Porsche just ahead of him. That is Reserve Racing's Martin Yankov. Good scrap for ninth place going on between them. Here is third and fourth place. Andreev could lose out on a podium in the very last gasp of this race here. But Vladislav Shopov, all on his own, in amongst the lap traffic, made the right call at the right time to move on to the slicks, has been a lot quicker to adapt to the slicks than anybody else. The only driver in at the top 10 who's hit a 1 minute 44 lap time out there. It has been a masterful wet to dry display for Vladislav Shopov who comes around the final corner now to win the first feature race of season 8 the Sim Gear GT3 Premier League and while that's been going on there have been changes further back because uh, Philip Koenig is now ahead of Bozidar Andreev. Andreev has dropped down as far as 7th place so he's had a moment there on the last lap, I think. It'll be Vasil Yekov across the line in second as Svetanov goes side by side there with Martin Yankov for eighth place. A few drivers have lost positions on this final lap. Around the outside now comes Svetanov. He will take eighth position then. Yekov has already crossed the line in second. Kochev third. Brazilio fourth. Ivanov rounding out your top, half, uh, top five ahead of Koenig. And I think that for the 9-11 in particular, this is going to be a very sore race. Bozidar Andreev ultimately only in seventh. Now, where is the AM class battle? There's only a second between the AM class leader and second place. In fact, it may be less than that. Danchev in 15th, Parvanov in 16th. Now, where are they? They will be coming around the last couple of corners at the moment, I think. Rachev will cross the line in 14th overall next. Where is our AM battle? There it is. And it's going to be a change, is it, at the very end of the race. Parvanov across the line. He was the AM, place, uh, AM class second place car, was he not? Bozidar Paranov. Well, Parvanov, sorry, has gotten past there for 15th position. And he gets past the big BMW, Krastin Stanchev, at the very last turn of the race. Ivelo Dimitrov with a slightly fixed car. Only slightly, I will hasten to add. Milchev has had a moment right at the end of the race too. Just getting to the flag in these treacherous conditions has proven to be too much for a few of them, including Ivo Samafiov, who eventually decides, you know what, I don't need the checkered flag. I'm going in. I need a drink. <laughs> And I think a few of them might be partaking after that race. It was uh, certainly a tricky, tricky race for all parties concerned in those kind of conditions. Bozidar Parvanov in the 24 car. We saw him getting through there right at the end, but he is uh, actually a... Uh... And we'll look at that in a second. Uh, Vladislav Shopov is your race winner by 20 seconds. I must admit, I didn't think I'd see that kind of gap at the front in these races. Vasil Yekov taking second place. Uh, Kochev in third position. Vrazilov in fourth place eventually. Uh, he gained some places on the last lap as a few others struggled. Ivanov in fifth. Koenig taking sixth place. Seventh position uh, for Bozidar Andreev. Again, I think that reeks of a missed opportunity for him. Uh, if he'd been on the slick tyres at the end, who knows where he would have ended up. Eighth place for Svetanov. Yankov in ninth. Shopov in tenth place. Anton Stratiev in eleventh. Twelfth place for Varbanov. Atanasov in thirteenth. Raichev in fourteenth place. And then it was a move for the AM leader. Couldn't quite remember in the heat of the moment whether... Uh, Parvanov was an AM driver, and sure enough, yes, he is. The 24 car winning AM at the very last turn. Krastin Stanchev just behind him in 16th place, the first of the BMWs. Uh, Vodinicharov in 17th, Dimitrov in 18th position. 19th place going to Milen Milchev, 20th place to Ser Serafimov, who uh, eventually didn't take the flag. Stefanov in 21st. Mavrodiev in 22nd, Dimitrov 23rd, Janovsky 
as quick as he was towards the end, running within the top 10, at least on track, he was a lap or two down. 24th place for him. Nikolov in 25th. Palauzov in 26th place. Stoyanov in 27th. Kerchev in 28th. 29th place falling to Kutsarski. Uh, the first of those who spent a long time in the pits, uh, the Belgian racer Voy Vervek in 30th place. Bastangiev down in 31st. Both of them look so quick in this race. Such a shame that they got caught out on lap one. Markov in 32nd. Nikolov, Samson, Kachinov, Dramaliev and Vilikov rounding out your 37 cars in that race. Again, not everyone getting to 70%, so not everyone will score points, but everyone will breathe a sigh of relief. I think, to have reached that chequered flag. I now understand that we can uh, hear from some of our drivers uh, at the conclusion of two thrilling races in the Simgear GT3 Premier League, starting off with our AM podium. So we'll see who we welcome into the box first. Of the uh, three cars up there at the sharp end, of course, what a race that was. Uh, at the end for Bozidar Parvanov, he moved up to the inside line at the very end. Uh, we will start, though, I think, uh, when he arrives with our third place driver uh, in class, that being uh, Radi Bodinicharov, who was right in amongst it. He doesn't seem to be there at the moment, actually. So what we will do instead uh, is initially talk... Uh, to Bozidar Parvanov. Um, Mr. Parvanov, uh, it looked to me there at the end of the race that you were on the slick tyres, and that yes. seemed to work very nicely for you. Yeah, my racing engineer helped me to get my to, uh, uh, to put the slick tyres on. Wait, uh, on the pit. We went uh, to review and we put the slick tyres on. Now, those first couple of laps, while it was still not all the way dry, well, it was never all the way dry, but it looked particularly difficult immediately after the drivers on slicks came out of the pit lane. Um, I mean, tell me how tricky was it? Did you have a couple of moments out there on the slick tyres? Yeah, sometimes I uh, would have spun out, but uh, I've managed to keep the car on the track. I, I spun out uh, one time, but uh, I recovered and yeah. Yeah. It was a very impressive drive, I think, from anybody who managed to make it work in these conditions. Uh, Krastin Stanchev, uh, I'm getting the impression that you and the BMW were on the uh, were on the wets there at the end, but you were so close to making it work for you. Uh, a corner away from the AM win. I imagine that's a, a bit frustrating. I don't know if he can hear me. Uh, Krastin, ah, oh, he's just joined, actually. Uh, Krastin Stanchev, can you hear me, my friend? Yeah, yep. Uh, okay, there you are. Um, Krastin, it looked to me at the end of the race that you were you were on the, uh, the wet tyres while quite a few of the others were coming up behind you on slicks. You almost made it work, though, one corner away from the win in AM. I imagine that was a little bit annoying. <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually was not aware of that I was battling for the first place uh, in the AM class. Uh, but yeah, it made it a little bit uh, more frustrating when uh, when everything finished, uh, understanding that I lost the first place uh, right there. But yeah, risking on the wet tires. Lots of other opportunities, though, of course, to try and claim some good results in the AM class. Looking at some of the circuits that we will visit in Season 8, um, which one are you most excited to try now that we've... Uh, finished up here at Portimao? Uh, probably Monza. Monza. And is that yeah. because the BMW might be quite nice there? <laughs> uh, no, just I like the track. Okay. Well, I'm not sure how the first corner will be, but I like it otherwise. <laughs> that could be very yeah. exciting. Uh, yeah, we have probably. Radislav here as well. Uh, so Radi Vodinicharov, who came uh, third eventually in the AM class, um, Raddy, it struck me that in that race, you were one of the only drivers who largely, at least from what we saw, kept out of trouble. It seemed that people would pass you and then have a moment. Um, was the race like that for you or were you having some dramas out there like everyone else? Uh, for me, the race uh, is uh, probably 
good because uh, I don't have a podium in the sim racing. And okay. I, I passed the uh, pro, uh, pro drivers because I don't uh, want to uh, I don't want to slow uh, uh, their uh, their drive. Mm. And uh, I am very good in, uh, in wet. I probably I think because in I I drive karting and in karting I am very good in in wet in and yeah. Excellent. Well, it was it was very exciting to to see you in amongst it there, as you said, with the pro drivers. But uh, good thinking to to maybe stay out of their battles. Um, I I will say that uh, both yourself, Raddy, and uh, Bozidar have have karting in your uh, in your Discord photos. Uh, if if Craston is still there, I will ask him. Are you are you also a, a real life driver like these two in karts? Uh, no, no. Uh, I ride motorcycles for fun, but uh, no karting experience. There you go. But we are so we are still seeing uh, real life petrol heads, of course, in yeah. these uh, in these sim battles, which is really exciting, uh, guys. It was really impressive racing from all of you. Thank you for joining us for the AM press conference. And uh, again, massive, massive congratulations uh, going out to Bozidar. Then congratulations on your win. I want to say something. Oh, go in, on, go on. In the real life, uh, me and uh, Bozidar Pervanov is uh, we are best friends and we have communication on the race. And uh, with this, we win. Okay. Yeah, we made a strategy. Ah, okay. <laughs> Good job to everyone. Bye. Excellent job. There you go. There's some teamwork going on at the front of AM then. We'll keep an eye on that as the season goes on. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, thank you for joining us. Good luck in round two. Thank Bye. You. Good thank night. You. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Great to hear then from some of our drivers there. And almost as soon as we open the floodgates, our uh, our pro drivers have joined us as well. Uh, we will start from uh, P3 with, with Mr. Kochev. Um we didn't see everything that happened on that last lap, I must say, uh, Rosty. But um, it, it looked like a, what, a lot was going on. Um, tell us how you got through into third place, because you certainly weren't there at the start of the final lap. Well, I have literally no idea. It was such a hectic last two of laps. Even. <laughs> the guys that didn't change tires and the pits were like messy. So I had like four or five seconds faster pace per lap than the guys that didn't change tires and I was pushing pretty hard so I got somehow got it to P3. I imagine that um, immediately after the pit stop it was probably a bit scary trying to figure out whether or not you made the right call. Uh, yeah like the rain is really good uh, you could have seen the dry line and you try to stay on it as mm. much as possible. I had like two situations that were like really scary but managed it kind of well, just didn't push uh, my 100%. Like, I was very cautious and managed to get it. Excellent job for you in third position. We'll move on to uh, the Yekov Rally School zone, Vasil Yekov. Um, that race was, was very dramatic for you. You were up and down the timing screen. Um, obviously, the combination of the Audi and the Slicks helped you at the end there. Um, second place, considering you started on pole, are you are you still happy with second? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, hello, by the way, Adam. Uh, glad glad you can join us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure for me. Uh, well, this is actually my first podium. I've never been here, so oh. yes, uh, I've I've never been in this kind of conference uh, <laughs> since since three years or four. I don't know how how long I've been racing in Bullers, but this is my first, so I'm very happy with it. It was a it was a big drama for me because uh, I'm the only one who's driving the Audi, and uh, uh, I'm having a hard time uh, setting up on wet. So that's why I lost from first position. Even the first race, uh, I was losing because uh, it was very very unstable. Um, I I didn't have the right setup. Um, 
uh, glad my teammate uh, helped me out and said uh, check your uh, ABS systems and traction because they were very low and I you know like on wet we're driving with um, almost high number of uh, traction control and ABS so I changed that it helped but when I switched to dry tires this is where uh, you know things started to happen so I'm very happy yes uh, it was an amazing race and I almost got uh, killed in the end, but I got saved. Uh, I had a big spin, but uh, I managed to not crash the car very badly. So I had only like damaged wheels. So that's good. Yes, I did notice that the rear end of your car looked a little bit um, damaged. Different, yeah, by the end of the race. Yep. Um, obviously, some people will be joining this YouTube stream having never been involved with this community before. Um, you know, you've got your own team name there on the car, Yekov Rally School. Tell us a bit about that. Explain it to us since you're in your first press conference. Oh, thank you for that. Well, uh, yeah, um, I'm a former rally driver. Actually, this race was like a rally. You know, the traction was so different because for me, track, uh, tr uh, you know, racing on the tracks, it's, it, was, it was boring in the beginning, you know, because nothing was happening. Uh, so, you know, after that, I got to love it because of the competition, you know, many cars uh, on, um, and I love how we can go into the corner, like three or four cars at the same time. So this race was, it was like a rally because it was slippery. It was action all over. I like that. Um, for the school, well, my dad, my dad is an European champion in rally, uh, mm -hmm. Pavel Jekov. Uh, he established the academy in 1995. So it's a it's an old rally academy, you know. It's 29 years old, and I've been to the states. And after I uh, finished my college there, I came back and I continued the school and I moved it to Sofia. And this is the capital of Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. So every day, that's what I do. It's it's a bit different from what we do here, but I teach people how to control their car. You know, uh, many people come for different reasons. Some for drift, some for rallying, some just Someone just got nice and fast car and wants to, you know, learn how to drive it. This is what I do. I teach people uh, the whole physics and we do it on gravel. It's the best way because it's, you know, gravel. It simulates uh, rain or snow. So that's what we do. It's pretty amazing, by the way. It sounds very cool. And uh, obviously that uh, that gravel experience seemingly paying off for you today, particularly uh, taking the slicks uh, in the early stages what, uh, of the of the last stage, let's call it, of the, the rally of Porto <laughs> Um working out for you there right at the end, taking that second place. Congratulations to you and congratulations also to our winner who is here in the press conference as well. Uh, Vladislav Shopov, um, you were the the front runner among those on slicks. A 20 second winning advantage. I, I don't think anyone expected that coming into this race. Well, I don't think anyone expected to take uh, dry tires at the pit stop. And I think I'm the only one who did that. So that decision won me the race. It wasn't my driving. My driving was horrendous, by the way. But I took the correct decision and that pretty much that's won me the race. I'm not sure you were the only one, but uh, uh, yes, it was. It was uh, clearly the right decision. Um, I think you downplay yourself, though. I think that was that was a strong first round of the season. Well, it could have been very much stronger. I'm wait, still waiting for my teammates to show up so we can dominate, or at least that's the plan. <laughs> but uh, well, they, they're missing this round, but they're going to be here for the next one. Uh, maybe we're going to make setups. We don't know if it's going to rain. But for a 30-minute practice before the race, I, I'm pretty pretty happy. One thing I have to say, though, is a uh, big sorry to uh, Georgi uh, Raichev, uh, because I kind of killed him. I'm going to get a penalty for that one, I'm sure. Um, uh. Yeah, well, pretty much that was the the driving factor behind my the decision-making. Uh, the pit stop, I was like, yeah, I already killed him. So, well, what's, uh, what's the point of continuing? Um, I can just risk it. So I did, and I turned out that I was, I was like, I think five seconds a lot faster so yeah pretty good one and uh, of course last year uh, or last season i should say season seven uh runner up 855 points second in the championship uh, yourself and georgie to that point seem to be fighting um all the time as you were for second and third in the championship last year 
Um, it seems to me that you guys are on the pace with each other. You're you're pretty closely matched. I, um, I imagine there's a level of respect between the two of you that he'll understand you didn't mean it. Well, I hope so. I certainly hope so. I already <laughs> said sorry. Uh, well, <laughs> I really hope he's going to forgive me for this one. But yeah, we are pretty much on the same pace. I think mm -hmm. the only one who's faster than us, or maybe a little bit, a little bit faster, same pace, uh, like close to our pace, is Philip. So big shout out to Philip. He got killed in the lap, this lap one second race. So uh, if if that hadn't happened, well, we would have been fighting for P1, I'm sure. Well, yes, exactly right. Uh, lots of people, as you say, got killed during that one, but thankfully most of them still crossed the line regardless. Um, no matter what happens next in regards to the stewarding, uh, congratulations on getting across the line first, managing it so well during this race. Uh, I think you've got a lot to be proud of from my view. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, guys. That's our top three then in the pro category. I want to thank all of them for joining us for our press conference in the pro category as well. Uh, you guys are, are free to make a bid for freedom now, uh, if you so choose. Uh, I do see that we do have a couple of others in here, though, and I assume they're here to talk to us, uh, starting with uh, Philip Koenig, who won the first race uh, of the day, the uh, the 20 minute sprint, uh, a difficult race for you, I'd say, Philip. I think you had just about every position on the board in race two at one point or another up and down the order. Uh, hello, good evening and nice to meet you, Adam. Um, yeah, the first race was um, pretty good. I, had, I was confident and wanted I didn't have any issues whatsoever. So, but second race, I unfortunately had uh, a crash in, in lap one. So I got a little bit of damage. And then the other problem that I had that I didn't change my graphic settings probably uh, correct. So I didn't saw the dry line. So I stayed on the wet tires, which um, wasn't the best option. But um, even with the damage and the crash in lab one, I could save it on P7, I guess. So I'm pretty happy with the situation that got out of it. So um, yeah, we will see what is going to happen with the next races. And yeah, but Giga Race was a lot of fun for sure. And um, I, I do want to ask, I think, I think, apologies if I'm wrong to anybody else listening, uh, but looking up and down that timing screen, I think you had the highest I rating of anyone on the track. Um, tell me, how much are you putting into this? How often are you on iRacing as a platform? How many hours a week do you think? Oh, it's pretty different to be honest. Like in the summer, um, I'm barely driving because of the good weather. I'm going out, but in the winter, I'm putting a lot of effort. It depends on on the series. For exact, for example, our um, series that we are organizing for my team, uh, German Sim Racing, um, and Ifra. I don't know if you know this series, but I think yes. Mm -hmm. I'm putting like depends on the race maybe 20 to 30 hours of training wow. um, and gonna change the settings, try the settings and yeah, everything is, you have to try everything out with the setting and then to train the track and the car. But yeah, for this uh, this race, especially I trained around, I would say 10 to 12 hours maybe um, because of the first race and you know, the first race um, is always a little bit special and yeah, but it was, Oh, and also it's a new track, so yeah, for sure, it was a lot of fun. Amazing work, my friend. Uh, congratulations on that win and keeping in there in the top 10. Interesting to know about the graphic settings as well, but uh, you'll know for next time. Obviously, this uh, this is a fairly new thing, the wet weather in the platform. And the other man that's joined us in the commentary box, um, I want to ask him specifically, actually, about the the eye racing weather model. Uh, Stefan Bastandjev, great to talk to you again. It's been a little while. I think last time would have been Barcelona a little over a year ago um, when you're in winter series. Um, from your point of view, having raced in Germany and therefore done a lot of wet weather driving, how is it? How is it stacking up so far? This uh, this new toy of ours, the the wet weather. Yeah, hi Adam. First of all, pleasure to have you joining Bullers. Um, I think it's a, it's a it's a great privilege for for the Bulgarian Championship to have you to have you on board commenting. Um, yeah, the weather. I mean, it's a, it's a brand new update to iRacing, of course. Um, I don't have 
so much experience with it. I, I think I've driven maybe three, four, five, six laps properly in the wet. But uh, yeah, I think they've done a pretty good job uh, simulating the the extreme weather. So the the extreme wet weather with the puddles and and, and the curbs. Um, unfortunately, I think in race one, I think the conditions were a bit mixed and uh, it was really hard to judge. Uh, I mean, I think the lines, the braking points, uh, and of course, everything you see on your screen, because I'm driving with, with I mean, I can see a uh, huge amounts of, of spray, uh, water on my dashboard, everything. And uh, I am trying to drive the wet line, but it, it just doesn't seem to work. So I think... Right. You, it is like it is like driving in the dry on a simulator. You have to kind of learn the the, the tricks within within the sim. Um, but uh, I was really really surprised uh, at the end of race two when uh, the, the track became dry and you had that racing that dry racing line. Um, I even went off clipping the clipping the wet line and I went off on the final corner. And I think I think that kind of shows the realism uh, on on the on the dry line on the drying line. Um, and it's yeah it's it's pretty much one to one with the real thing. Uh, but I think I think some work has to be done when it's when it's raining. But uh, I think I think to, I think to put it simply, they have to kind of communicate what you see on screen a lot more with with what you feel. And of course, for a simulator, it, it is difficult to to reach perfection. But uh, yeah, I think for I think for a first month with this new set with this new update, I think they've done a really good job. And I mean. How how does someone with your resume in the real world end up being an AM driver? Is it just a matter that, like we just heard from Philip, of course, <laughs> how much he's putting into this? Is it just a matter that you're too busy with actual carbon fiber to uh, to be a pro? Uh, funny. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, unlike uh, the, the, the the real pros here, I mean, I'm not really on the sim that, that often. I mean, I, my rating is below four thousand. I probably spend maybe an hour a week on it if I'm if I'm lucky. So uh, fair enough. Uh, yeah, for me it's. I mean, I have, I have university going on, of course. I am training hard for for the first round of the season in two weeks' time. Um, so yeah, just finding time is is difficult. Plus, to be honest, once you're at at, the, at a good enough level in the real world, and you, you don't really have, let's say, the prof the most professional simulator. I mean, again, <laughs> you're a, a professional driver is chasing perfection. So. I mean, iRacing is, is a good is a good model, but uh, when you want to simulate the real car with the sim, it's it's just not good enough so far. But um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's 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 great fun. It's of course a privilege for myself to be part of part of the championship. Um, I don't think I'll be able to attend every single race uh, this season, but um, yeah, I think uh, I think uh, there's a there's a high chance I'll be racing in in the next round. Excellent. Well, we look forward. We look forward to that then, uh, Stefan. Thank you for joining us, and uh, well, good luck in that next round of the season. Then we have our fingers crossed that we'll see you on the starting grid. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. And uh, I also want to extend my thanks as well to everybody who's been so welcoming in the community on this my my first appearance. I'll try and get my head around everyone's names and uh, learn the ways and means of this series over the next few weeks. I hope you have enjoyed uh, joining me for this broadcast, the first of many in this season eight of the season, the Sim Gear GT3 Premier League. Next week, it will be Road America same starting time as well and uh, we'll be getting underway with the broadcast around uh, eight o'clock next sunday with a 20 minute sprint and a 40 minute in, uh, longer race a pit stop race with uh, of course the qualifying session to look forward to before that as well if you've enjoyed this do subscribe to pitlane.tv that's how you can keep up uh, with all of these broadcasts as the season goes on also do take a look at uh, bullers.com b-u-l-e-r-s.com that's where you can see all of the information regarding this league if you want to take part in future they've also got various social media pages that you can take a look at as well including their Facebook page look up a Bullers to find all of their information uh, thank you then so much for joining us for this broadcast from myself adam weller from everyone taking part in the gt3 premier league brought to you by sim gear bullers and pitlane.tv it's thank you good night and strap in when we do it all again next week at road america